Hello everyone, this is Will from Apple One to One Training. Thank you for joining us for another week of amazing educational videos. We are former Apple employees, created this channel for you guys to learn some tips and tricks in order to get the most out of your Mac. Please like and subscribe all of the content that we are creating. We really do appreciate it. We are just building this on our own, no advertising, no sponsors, nothing. Wanting to give you guys the best knowledge that you need. Today we're gonna to talk about things that you must do before you upgrade your Mac OS. So we're gonna give you five tips today that are gonna be very valuable in order for you to upgrade to the next Mac OS. In this case, we're doing Tahoe, but this does apply to any time you upgrade a Mac OS. And since Tahoe is coming out in the next month, we wanted to give you some ideas that you would want to do before you do that. So the first obvious one is going to be Time Machine. Let's talk about Time Machine. If you don't know what this is, Time Machine requires you to have a USB drive or an external storage device to back up the entire system. This includes all your music, your apps, your photos, your email, your documents, everything. It's an exact replica of your computer. You would connect a storage device to your Mac to back up the machine. My recommendation is always back up double of what your hard drive has. So, and this is also exactly what Apple states right here in this sentence. They are recommending that you should have double the space of what you have. So if I have a four terabyte drive, which I have right now, I would recommend getting a eight terabyte drive, which is what exactly is what I have. Now, for those who have Macs and haven't done this for a while, I'm gonna recommend a disc. This is not sponsored. SanDisk is a drive that I think is very good. It's USB-C. It's very fast to back up your entire computer. You could probably do a 200 gig within like two hours. It's very, very fast. And then they have one, two, and four terabyte options. I'm a special example because of all the media that I do every day that I have to use a bigger drive. So this doesn't work for my workflow, but I think for most people, it will work for your workflow. So SanDisk, I would recommend. When you go and hook up your external drive, it'll ask you to use it for Time Machine. If you have files already on the drive, big thing you have to know is that the drive does have to be reformatted. So make sure that anything that's on the external drive, especially one that you've used previously, is going to be wiped out. So in my system right now, you can see I have two time machine backups. I have one old drive, which I stopped doing back in 2024, and then a new one that I created recently. And that one is the one I'm using because I have stuff very old and I don't want to lose that footage. And because I ran out of storage room, I had to change and I now have two systems. You can have as many systems as you want. All you got to do is hit the plus sign and then you would just choose the drive that's externally connected. And then if it has to reformat, it will tell you that and it'll do it. Time Machine is without a doubt the most important thing. I remember working at Apple it, with, when Mac OS Leopard was first introduced and this feature came out. That's how long ago this has been around. And it was a game changer when it came to the backup storage system. A lot of Mac OSs or even third parties doesn't back up the entire system. It backs up only the documents or only the movies. This was going through your library file. This was saving everything, even your apps. And it was very valuable to you. So recommend highly to have a time machine backup. Next one is compatibility. So as the times change, Mac is not gonna be able to support every single system going forward. So it's important that you check what is compatible with your machine. And this may determine if you think you should keep your Mac or maybe think about upgrading. So for the example I'm gonna be doing is Mac OS 26, which is Tahoe. And they're showing us right now on the screen what Macs are compatible for that model. Anything that's an error has to be a 2020 and later and it has to be with silicon. And you can start to see that Intels are starting to be faded out. IMAX has to be 2020 and higher. Uh, Mac Mini has to be 2020 and higher. And you can see that the latest one is the Mac Pro. So you will see next year, more importantly, if you're watching this video a year down the line, they are expected to not support Intel's anymore with Mac OS 27. So please be aware that you can see that this could be the final year that Apple is supporting an Intel-based Mac. And by the way, if you have an Intel-based Mac, I have no idea why. But here you are. These are the things you want to look at for any compatibility. And even if it's not Mac OS 26, you can look at previous ones. So if I go and I look up, which is going to be an example I'm going to do for today, which is Mac OS Sonoma, you can look at a list of machines that are compatible. So you can find them everywhere on Apple support page. 
Next up is app compatibility. Now, app compatibility is a little different than the compatibility of your machine. For example, I am a big Final Cut Pro user, and a lot of times they come out with a new version of Final Cut Pro, and my concern is that it will affect the system to the point where the libraries may not work correctly. So one of the things I always do is I make a duplicate of Final Cut Pro before I upgrade it. So how you do that is you could just go to a right click and then you could do a duplicate and what it's doing now is that it's creating a duplicate of Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro 10 to Final Cut Pro 11 I absolutely wanted to keep a number one is I made a backup of all my stuff that way in case something happens I have an old version of the library but number two is that I have the old version of Final Cut Pro available on my machine and that will allow me to open up a previous version of Final Cut Pro before the new one. Apps that are like extremely important to you, you should absolutely do this with. You never know what may not be compatible in the next Mac OS, or it's gonna force you to upgrade your Final Cut Pro or any app to the next version. To save time, I like to always have a copy of the previous version of the app, just so that if I have to go backwards, I can. Look at sites just to make sure what they state about the next one. So as you can see, the copy has been made here. So now when you upgrade Final Cut Pro, you're only upgrading this version, not the copy version. And then that way you can save that. It wouldn't even be a bad idea just to underline this and maybe I'll even put the date. So I'll put like eight, uh, the day I made this was nine, four, 25. So that way I just have like a date in the name, even though I probably will have it here, but it's important for me to know when I did this. So. That's something I would recommend doing to the, only the most important apps you have. Freeing up storage is extremely important because you have to have the room in order to install it. Now for me, having a four terabyte drive, this is less important, but for those who buy the 125 gig, the 256 gig, you need to make sure you know your storage room. So in the top right corner of your screen, we actually did a video of how to clean up your Mac. And this video will go more in depth of what I'm showing you now, but go into your storage settings of there. You can do that by going to the Apple About This Mac, more info, and then you can go under storage. If I go to the Apple About This Mac, more info will take me to this page right here, and then I can go to storage settings, and then all the storage settings are here, and watch our other video to show you how to do that, so that way you can go through that in the future and look at this and see how you can clean up some room so you can install it. You're probably gonna need at least 10 to 20 gigs of room. The final thing, which is something very rare that you probably won't do, but it would be a good idea, is to create a bootable image. What is a bootable image? So you have the ability to download and install previous versions of Mac OS and store it on an external thumb drive so that if any reason you upgrade your machine, and something goes wrong, or there is something that is not compatible anymore and you wanna go backwards, this is the way you do it. You create a image of the operating system so that you can do it. So for example, if I upgrade to macOS Tahoe, but there's something about Tahoe that doesn't work and I need to go backwards, I will have to reinstall the operating system. This includes wiping it out and also going into my time machine and restoring it. So right now I'm on the support page of how to download and install your Mac OS. The first thing you have to do is go on the App Store. There are versions uh, all the way back from 10.13 that you can actually install the system. So for example, I'm gonna use Sonoma, even though I'm on Sequoia, I'm just gonna show you the way you do it. So under Sonoma, you click here, which then takes you to the App Store. You then get the actual utility of Mac OS Sonoma. It'll then open up settings, and then it'll start to ask me to download that image. Now, it's giving me an error because I'm already running a version of Mac OS that's beyond that because I already downloaded it for you. So inside of Launchpad, I have Sonoma. So if I just type in Mac OS Sonoma, here is the image that I downloaded for you. Now that we've done step one, now we have to go to step two, if you had to get older versions of there. So if you needed Lion, Mountain Lion, Yosemite, very, very old versions, you can do that. That's why I have an old computer and I do have the version of Lion installed. Uh, going past that is a 
bootable installer. This is the next thing you have to do. So we've already downloaded the Mac OS. The next thing is we have to connect and rename the USB flash drive. So you, it is recommended to use a 32 gig flash drive. So you should have that. I'm using a USB A one, but I have a adapter on it. And then what we're going to do is we have to change the name called my volume, which is extremely important. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the name. I'm going to go to my drive, which is right here. By the way, if you don't see this on your desktop, make sure you go to Finder's settings and turn on external disk. Because if you don't see it, it's because you don't have this on. Let's go to Untitled, and I'm going to rename it to My Volume. I'm just going to hit Return. Okay, so now we have named it. Now we're going to use Terminal. Now this is an app you probably don't use very often, but Terminal is going to automatically create the image so that it doesn't require you to do more work. So I'm going to highlight the Sonoma package, because that's what I have. So I'm going to highlight everything in here, copy it. Now I'm going to open Terminal. I'm going to use Spotlight and type in Terminal. And all I'm going to do now is just paste it. And then I'm going to hit Return. It's going to ask me for my password, my administrative password. So you have to be the admin to do this. Here we go. And then it tells me, in order to start doing this, we need to erase the volume. And then I'm going to hit Yes. And now what it's doing is it's reformatting the disk. And what it's going to do is it's going to put the recovery image of macOS Sonoma directly onto the USB drive. This is going to be very valuable if I need to get a recovery for any reason and go back to the previous version of macOS Sonoma in this case. So as you can see, it's building. But once it's complete, this will be an install image. As you can see, it renamed it. It called it Install macOS Sonoma. So there's obviously a code built into your macOS that renames this drive. And then it's also going to create the operating system and the recovery system. All right, everyone. So now the bootable image has completed here. It tells me the media is now available on volumes install macOS Sonoma. So if I double click on here, here is the image. It's all right here built in. As you can see, it took up a good amount you so see as you can tell a 16 gig is not going to work here you will need a 32 gig but now the image is completed and now i can option boot and boot to this image if i needed to install this operating system so these are the five things that I would recommend before you upgrade to macOS Tahoe or any operating system you do in the future to do these five things a bootable image is something you only have to create one time, but definitely going through your storage, your app compatibility, utilize some iCloud features to help you out with this. With app compatibility, make sure your apps are working properly and that you know that they work for the next system going up. Make sure that your Mac is even compatible for it, and if it's not, you may have to rethink down the line, you may have to change it. Time Machine is a no-brainer, you should already have that. And then the image, obviously, is, is a backup plan just in case. So I hope this was very educational for you guys. And please, in the comments, anything that you want to throw as advice or other things I didn't talk about, please absolutely do that. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me for this video. And I love every single one of you.